of Aram had a general who had a wife who had a servant girl who had an idea. But to understand what her idea was, you have to know a couple of things about the general. He is a man with a great, glorious battle history. He's won a lot of battles. A valiant, brave man, but he's got a big problem. He's sick. He's bad sick. He's got a contagious spot growing on his arm and it's getting bigger and bigger. There's no way to get rid of it. He has leprosy. Well, this little servant girl wasn't born a servant. She had actually been stolen from her home country. She was from the country of Israel. And the king of Aram, in one of his forays into Israel, one of his little roving bands of warriors had gone into Israel, had snatched this girl, brought her home, made her a servant to the king of Aram's general's wife. So she, here she is serving her mistress, and she said, you know what? If we were in Israel, your husband wouldn't have this disease because there's a prophet in Israel who can cure leprosy. The mistress told her husband, the husband told the king, and the king said, ah, so there's a man in Israel who can cure leprosy, eh? The king of Aram said, well, we'll send you to him then. So they loaded up 10 big blocks of silver, thousands of shekels of gold, suits of clothing. They put it all on animals. They got their chariots ready. And here goes Naaman. Now he's zooming over to the next country, zooming over to Israel with all these presents. He pulls up in front of the palace of Israel. He goes in. He sees the king of Israel. He gives him his, his letter from the king of Aram. The king of Israel now opens the letter from the king of Aram. And he reads it. It says, Dear King of Israel, please heal Naaman of his leprosy. The King of Israel grabs his kingly robes and just tears them in two. What, am I God that I can go around curing leprosy? Am I God that I can make people die and make people alive? You know what this is? This letter is a provocation of war. He's just trying to get us. There was a prophet in Israel named Elisha who heard about his king's predicament. He sent a messenger to the king of Israel saying, send him to me just so that he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. The king said, of course. So the king of Israel sent Naaman over to the house of Elisha the prophet. So here comes Naaman. He rolls up in front of Elisha's house. They've got all the horses and the chariots. Elisha doesn't even come out of the house. He just sends out a messenger. The messenger says, oh yeah, leprosy, that's easy to cure. Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Went back inside. Naaman's furious. You call that? You call that curing me? Yes, he turns around. They tear out of there. They squeal their chariot tires. They go a little ways. He's angry. He says, at the very least, I was sure this guy would come out and he'd do like some prophet stuff, you know, and he'd be big and imposing with robes and he would make some chants and he would wave his arms over the sickness and poof, I would get better. But this washing seven times in the Jordan River, what kind of cure is that? Hey, if I want a river, I got plenty of rivers back in Damascus and I got better rivers than they've got here. Now Naaman's servants came up to him. Father, they said, what if the prophet had come out and asked you to do something difficult? You would have done it, wouldn't you? What if he had told you it was going to cost way more money than you have? You would have somehow figured out how to get that money, wouldn't you? So why, when he gives you a very simple solution, why don't you take it? There's nothing to lose. It's just seven baths. Naaman gives in. Yeah, you're right. So they go down to the Jordan River. And he, Naaman gets out of his chariot. He climbs down there into that small river. He dips himself down in one time. Leprosy is still there. 
he knew this wasn't going to work. He dips himself down in two times. He dips himself down in three times. It's still there. He dips himself down four times. He dips himself down five times. He dips himself down six times. It's still there. It hasn't gone away. What a stupid idea. But the prophet did say to wash seven times. So he goes in the seventh time and he comes up. His skin is as clear and as fresh as a little baby boy's. The leprosy's gone. They get back in their chariots. They tear back to the house of Elisha. They get there. Now this time Elisha comes out. Naaman, the general, says, it worked. <laughs> Look it. I'm fixed. I'm better. <laughs> you know what? I believe now. The one true God is this God of Israel. I will never again worship another God. I will never again sacrifice to another God. This is the real thing. But won't you take these gifts from my king? We have this silver, we have this gold, we have these clothes. Elisha says, uh uh, don't want your gifts. What you've said is enough. Don't want anything else. The general said, at the very least, you'll allow me, won't you, to take home a memorial, to take home as much dirt from your place as I can carry on two donkeys. Would that be all right? Sure, that's all right. Take that. And one other thing. I have a small problem. Okay, so I get it. That this is the one true God. But when I go home, my master doesn't know that. My master, the king, he worships a god called Rimon. And every time he goes into the idol of Rimon, he bows down and I have to go with him. I mean, this is, is this a problem? I have to go in there with him. Uh, I'm obligated. He leans on my shoulder and he bows down and, and I have to bow down. Is that going to be a problem? Elisha says, you're all right. Don't worry about that. Just go with peace in your heart. So with clean skin and a clean heart, Naaman turns around, begins the trip back to Damascus. Now they hadn't gone very far when Elisha's servant, a man named Gehazi, said to himself, what have we done? That man had silver and gold and all these clothes on him. What have we done? We just let him go home without leaving any of that with us? What were we thinking? He takes off running after Naaman, the Aramean general. He catches up with him. Naaman jumps out of the chariot and he says, what's the problem? Is something wrong? Gehazi says, yeah, everything's fine. You know what, though? Strange thing. Right after you left, two seminary students came to our house and it occurred to Elisha that he really should have accepted something on behalf of these seminary students. So if it's okay with you, I'll just take, oh, give me a talent of silver and a couple of changes of clothing and I'll take that back for them. Naaman says, but of course, I offered you all this, of course. So he gives him not just one talent, he gives him two of these blocks of silver, and he gives him two changes of clothing, and he gives him servants to help carry this stuff back to the house. When they get near out of the house, Gehazi says, that's good enough, fellas, just leave it here. And then Gehazi takes it on into the house and finds a place to hide it. His master, Elisha, calls to him. Gehazi, could you come in here for a second? Gehazi comes in. So, where have you been, Gehazi? Who, me? Oh, you know, just around. Yeah, just around, huh? Was not my spirit with you when the man got out of the chariot to talk with you? Gehazi, is this the time to be accepting silver and clothing? Is this the time to be accepting vineyards and olive groves and flocks of sheep and men servants and maid servants? Because of this, the 
leprosy of Naaman now will cling to you and your descendants, Gehazi. And in that moment, Gehazi's skin became as white as snow, and he had leprosy until the day he died. And that's one small part of God's big story.